We're glad that you're here this morning. If you will, turn your Bibles to Amos chapter 4. And you're going to say, well, wait, you did that last week. I did part of that last week, yes. But that's, remember I told you we was going to just do a little flyover last week and hopefully more people would be here. Well, they're not here, but they're going to miss it, so. Maybe they can go back and watch it. If you've got your outlines, you'll see uh, we're going to cover uh, through verse 5 this morning, 1 through 5, because we did cover 1 through 3 a little bit last week. Uh, I have a King James with me this morning. It says... Uh, Kine, hear this word, ye kind of Bashun. Uh, kine uh, is cow. Uh, that are in the mountains of Samaria, which oppresses the poor, which crush the needy, which say to their masters, bring and let us drink. The Lord God has sworn by his holiness that lo, the day shall come upon you that he will take you away with hooks and your posterity with fish hooks. You shall go out through the breaches, every cow at which is before her, and you shall cast him into the palace, saith the Lord. So what I want to do is I'm going to give you history about this a little bit. Now we talked about this as far as legal and morality or moral. There's lots of things that's legal that's not moral. And uh, Amos is the women that he called cows. We talked about this. To be a little pudgy, a little overweight was favorable in those days, not like it is today. Okay? Today, uh, everybody thinks to be perfect, you have to be thin. Uh, in that day, food was hard to come by, and, and to be a little overweight, not obese, a little overweight was a sign of God's blessing to you. But this, even how he wrote this, this was not, this was more of a prophetic uh, satire. Uh, it was not meant as a compliment. But he was showing that they were just as guilty. The women were not doing their immoral act, all right? But they were telling their husbands, we like this lifestyle. Continue to do what you do. And God's letting them know, I'm holding you just as accountable as, as the husband. And uh, so many times, that's why when we see the judgment of God falling upon our nation, you might say, well, that's, we're not practicing that. We don't believe that. We don't want that. But we're being held in account in the same manner because we know and, and we've not done anything to help stop it, to reprove it, to change the, the mindset. But we're going to move on. We don't want to beat right there too long. But now in verse 2, the Lord God has sworn by his holiness that, lo, the day shall come upon you, and he will take you away with hooks and your posterity with fish hooks, and you shall go out at the breaches, not at the gates. And we talked about that last week. They got smart, and they would build a gate inside the gate, and then they would fill it up with rocks and dirt, and, and as they were taking the batting ram and trying to get into it, all it was doing was packing the dirt in tighter, so they would discovered that they could go find breaches in the wall that was easier to, to break the wall down than to go through the gates. And he's saying, that's where y'all going to go out, just like the cows will be going out. And uh, they also did something else. You know, the city's always built a wall. You know, we've had great controversy about putting a wall up and, and protecting our borders. But uh, God's told Israel to do that all along. But the people, the rich people, would build inside the, the fortress up on hills themselves and built a mini fortress inside their fortress. He said, don't worry, they're going to take you down too. And actually, 
we know from history when Assyria, now it doesn't mention Syria here, but Syria, when they did this, they've got pictures of uh, pictures, plates that they made to make prints and stuff of them taking the people out with hooks in their nose and hooks in their lips. They would, they would just grab them and clip them like you would do a cow or a swine where you could get a hold of them and pull them. You had control. Those that wear the nose rings, if I come over and grab your nose ring, you're going to go where I go, aren't you? Yep, or an ear, even an earring or a lip ring. Uh, you're going to, you, you ever seen them grab a, a horse or a cow by the lips and twist their lips? Uh, they'll, they'll do pretty much whatever you ask them to do at that point, you know. Uh, history says this was, I believe, 720 B.C. when Samaria actually fell to the Syrians uh, when that took place. See, they had a problem. Their problem is the same thing that we have. Even though you've been told, I've been told, and we know that America is being judged right now, we keep in the back of our minds, well, we're his people, though. We're, we're bought by the blood, you know, and we are. But that doesn't mean we get to bypass the judgment that's still falling on this land. Why? Because we are citizens. We're Americans. And this is the country that we live in. Now, I want to show you something. Verse 2, the Lord God has sworn by His holiness. That's, that's, that's a bad thing. You know, you, you might say, well, you know, that doesn't mean really much because there's times that God, well, just like we talked about when, when God sent Jonah to Nineveh, they repented and God spared them. See, God sometimes can change His mind. When He swears by His name, His holiness, his heaven, there's, there's no change in that. He says, y'all have done it. And what made him so mad was Syria was doing the same thing as Israel, but they did it to foreigners. Israel was doing it to its own people. They were selling their people into slavery. They were doing things making sure they wouldn't worship it in the right place. They were not following God. They were doing all the things he told them not to do. They, were ha they had a form of godliness. That's why we'll read in a minute where he tells them to go on and, and make their sacrifices in these cities that was the wrong cities. Go on and make your sacrifice. You know, go on and, and keep your religion. Go on and keep your, your acts. Acts. You know. It was an act. Let, go to Jeremiah 18. Now, Second Chronicles 7.14, I know I told you to turn somewhere else. But we know Second Chronicles seven fourteen, if my people, right, who are called by my name, will humble themselves, y'all okay. Here's another one that I want you to see, Jeremiah eighteen, verse seven. At what instance, at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it. Okay? Nation, race, kingdom, government. A race of people and the government of the people. If he decides to snatch it down and out from underneath them. So let's say that he's talking about America right now and he decides to do that. If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent for the evil that I thought to do unto them. So if my people, 2 Chronicles 7.14, some people say, no, Skip, you're taking the 7.14 out of context. That's only for Israel. No, it's not. It's for any nation. 
If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. And here's a backup, a second testimony, Jeremiah 18, 7 and 8. If God wants to pull the plug on America, he will. Now, what I'm getting at is hold your place there in Jeremiah. Flip back over to Amos. The Lord has sworn by his holiness that lo, the day shall come upon you that he will take you away with fish hooks. Even if the people had repented at that time because he had sworn in his holiness, then his word was going to be fulfilled come hell or high water, no matter what the people did. That's why it was bad for them. Because he says, I swear in my holiness that this is coming upon you. You go back over to Jeremiah 18, verse 9. And at what instant I shall speak concerning the nation and concerning the kingdom to build and to plant it, if it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. All right. So what are you saying, Skip? I'm saying in this instance that we're reading Amos, the, the, there's no repentance because God's done had enough of them. And why? They were his chosen people. They knew better. They had... They had reaped the benefits of being his people, to whom much is given, much is required. To whom much is given, much is required. You have what? Eternal life through grace, through Jesus Christ. A lot's required from us. A lot is required. Oh, I don't want that. I want the easy part. I just want the the fun stuff. I want you to tell me how I'm blessed when I come into the city and I'm blessed when I go out into the car. I'm blessed here and blessed there. Well, you are. That's Deuteronomy 18. If you keep His commandments. Well, you don't understand my circumstances. He didn't tell us it was dependent upon our circumstances. That's why when you go back to Amos in verse 2 there of chapter 4, when he says that he swore in his holiness, that's why punishment had to come. And it did in 720 B.C. Just like they said, they found plates in, in Assyria, or Syria, I get them confused, showing them leading the people out with hooks in their mouth and in their noses. And that it was decimated. And we'll cover that in, in a few minutes. One of the lessons that we can glean from this, say, boy, girl, if you behave, on the way home we'll stop and get ice cream. And then when they start misbehaving, you say, you ain't getting no ice cream. They continue to misbehave, I'm going to spank you when you get home. That's how God does. Now, to this point in time, God swore by his holiness that this was going to come upon these people. I've not read necessarily that this is what's going to happen to America. But I don't see a whole lot of us lining up, crying out to God uh, for mercy and for, for help. Your help's not going to come through our government system. Your help's going to come through God. And, and we, the people, you know, that's how our government says we the people, right? We the people that's called by his name, if we would humble ourselves. It says he'll repent of the evil that he's thinking of doing to that nation. That's Jeremiah 18. And you shall go out to breaches every cow which is before her, verse 3, back in Amos 4, 3, and you shall cast them into the palace, saith the Lord. 
when they broke into, they also discovered the people in the houses with their own little fortresses. They took those people. They didn't lead them out with fish hooks. They cast them off their own walls down into the, the palace area to destroy them. And that's what they did. Exactly what God said the Syrians did to the people. Why? Because God swore in His holiness. Verse 4, Amos goes on to, to, to continue. Come to Bethel and transgress at Gilgal. Multiply transgression. Bring your sacrifices every morning and your tithes after three years. And offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving with leaven and proclaim and publish the free offerings. For this liketh you, O you children of Israel, saith the Lord God. And, and it's very apparent. He says, bring, the one place that brings me honor and the only place that you're allowed to make your offering is in Jerusalem. Now the kingdom divided and there's a lot going on between the two kings and, and uh, the king of the north uh, was worried that uh, if they went to Jerusalem that uh, maybe they would be sorry that they split the nation and that they might, you know, try to put the nation back together and he would lose his kingship. And so he set up all these different uh, false altars and, and the people started worshiping uh, the false gods. And let's go on down. If you look in your outline, the second message uh, of chapter 4, it's the refusal to repent. Now let's, let's start breaking this one down. And it starts out, And I also have given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities, and want of bread in all your palaces, yet you've not returned unto me, saith the Lord. So he's, he's told him what he's going to do, and he says, look, I made you have a, a, famine, a famine. That's what the cleaning of the teeth means. They didn't have anything in their teeth. They were picked dry. And you want of bread in all, all your places, Yet you have not returned to me. All right. I want you to hear. Now, I'm not saying that this was necessary for us, but I'm, I'm trying to show you a pattern of how God works. Turn your TV on to ABC News. What are they saying? Supply chain problems, right? And and, and uh, we're we're having food problems because some of these nations overseas can't produce their food. Well, when did we start relying on everybody else's food in this country? But let, let, let's just move on. But see, it's really this is where I want you to pay close attention. How many of y'all really think it's President Biden that's causing this? It's not him. Come on now. He don't know if he's here or there, all right? I'm not being mean. He just don't know. He, he's old. His mind is gone somewhere. Uh, it's not him. It's not even Satan. It's God knocking. Over in Revelation, in the church of Laodicea, the last, last age before God's kingdom is truly established, it says Jesus is standing at the door, knocking. And he's going to come in and sit and commune with whoever will open the door. About half of our nation has got the door shut and dead bolted, and they do not want to hear from God. Their conscience is being seared as with an iron like we studied in Sunday school. They're being given over to a debased mind where common sense doesn't make sense. That's why people like us are getting so frustrated because we know what the truth is and we know right from wrong and they're calling wrong right. 
and, and right wrong and, and because you believe in, in what God tells you to believe, you're unbearable. And that causes frustration. I'm going to tell you that we should not be so frustrated because we see and know what's going on. We know what's going on. The news is telling us there's going to be a food shortage. God is trying to get our attention. Let me tell you, how many of you, is it hard for you to comprehend what it's going to be like to be hungry? Have any of y'all ever really been hungry in this world, in this life? Me neither. Even when I've been hungry, like if... <laughs> Very rarely have I done this, so don't get the misimpression. I'm really super spiritual. And I, when I've done a fast, some of the fast is because of medical stuff. Other times, it's because I, I'm trying to focus in on God occasionally. But it's different when you know that Wednesday, I'm coming off the fast. I'm going to go get me a double quarter pounder with cheese, Right? When you know, you know what makes me really mad? My whole life, me and her have struggled with money. It's only to, I surrendered to God and then had godly men and women teach me on how to handle money. So I start, and I don't have a lot of money now, but it's, it's nice not to be saying, oh, I hope I have the 50 cents to pay you know, but now I have the dollar, so I can go buy me a quarter pounder. Well, actually, ten dollars if you want a quarter pounder with cheese. But I got the ten dollars to go get it, and you pull up and you go into the restaurant, and the doors are locked. Well, we can't get people to work. Well, I don't want to eat in my car. I want to come in and sit down in the air condition. Our bucket truck don't have air condition. I want air condition when I eat lunch. I'm sorry. Who would ever believe that would be in America when people refuse to work? Well, here we see God says, I've given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities, want of bread in all your places, and yet you have not returned unto me, says the Lord. I've tried to get your attention and you still not look back to me. Brother Henry used to say, the pig would be sitting there eating all the acorns and never look his head up to see where the acorns are coming from. And in America, we've been at the feed and trough for so long, we've not stopped long enough to say, Lord, thank you. Now this is coming, and you know what? Most of America still ain't looking around for God. We're going to figure this out. If we can just get four more years, or if we can get this one in, or if we can do that. Or, and, and I'm telling you, those people have about as much control. Matter of fact, they probably have less control than you and I do. Because we know God. And we know what he tells us to do. If we would do those things, says he would, what? Hear from heaven and heal our land. What made this country great was not the people, but God. Men and women that believe what God's word said and stood on his promises and was willing to, to give their life just like our Savior gave his life for us. Verse 7, And also of withholding the rain from you, when there were yet three months to the harvest, and I caused it to rain upon one city, and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon, and the other piece were upon, whereupon it rained not, withered. So two or three cities wandered unto one city to drink water, but just don't send them to, to Martha's Vineyard because they're not welcome there. They can't put 50 people up in one of them mansions that's vacant. But they did. They didn't put them back on a bus. They put them on a plane <laughs> and hired them a lawyer to sue. Was it Texas or Florida they came from? Florida. So they're suing the, the high-priced attorney from Martha's Vineyard is suing Florida on behalf of the, the illegal aliens. See, that's what I'm talking about. Th this is not even funny. It's stupid, ain't it? 
seared. They're blinded. They can't help it no more. What's our excuse? What's our excuse? They can't help it. We see. We all see. That's why it's so aggravating to us at times. So two or three cities wandered unto one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet, you've not returned to me, says the Lord. I've smitten you with blasting and mildew. When your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increase, the palm worm devoured them, yet you've not returned unto me, says the Lord. Send you all kinds of troubles with your food. I've sent among you the pestilence after the manner of Egypt, the plagues of Egypt. Your young men have I slain with the sword, and I've taken away your horses. I've made the stink of your camps to come upon your nostrils. So much death, they can't even bury the dead. Yet you've not returned to me, said the Lord. I've overthrown some of you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and yet were as a firebrand plucked out of the burning. Yet... Have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord? So now we're in the judgment seat, and, 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 and the one being tried is basically told to stand. Verse 12, Therefore thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do this unto thee, Underline this part. Prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. He swore to his holiness in the beginning of this chapter. Now he's time to prepare to meet your Lord. The sentence is about to be carried out. For lo, he that formeth the mountains and createth the wind and declareth unto man what is his thought that maketh the morning darkness and treadeth upon the high place of the earth. The Lord, the God of hosts, is his name. We, we look around and we see things and we think our problems Is of the major importance. Well, I'm, I, you know, I got this or I got that, and the Book of James tells us the man said, "Well, we're going to go to this city and we're going to buy, sell, we're going to make a profit, and we're going to stay here for a while. Then we're going to come back." And God says, "Well, what you ought to be saying is if God's will." And let me ask you, you know. We've seen some of these countries that have fallen to other countries quickly and under attack. And we see people trying to escape. I know we all have got issues. We, you know, I'm trying to sell one business, maybe two, and, and, and get out of that so I can concentrate more on this and, 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 and get in a different spot. But you know, I've, I've fretted over that, but the truth of the matter is, me and Donnie's talked about it, it might not take place before the trumpet blows. You know? We are in a position not to be afraid. God has told us we can go anywhere safely with Him. The, the question is, are you with Him? Because if you're with Him, we shouldn't be quite so frustrated. We shouldn't be wringing our hands so much. Matter of fact, we ought to be kind of smiling and kind of looking and looking up because our redemption is drawing nigh. Do you believe what that word says? I do. It's been proven over and over. You go and read what he prophesied here to the people. You know why I didn't tell them it was Assyria that was going to attack them in 720 B.C.? Syria was not a powerhouse at that time. If he had told them that, they would have laughed. 
He was already having trouble getting them to believe. What he's trying to do is get them to believe that God means what he says and says what he means. I'm trying to convince you that God means what he says. And you might think this is the most terrible thing that's going on. But I'm telling you, you need to be preparing to meet your God. And all this other stuff that everybody else wants you to worry about and the news wants you to worry about, it's really nothing to be worried about. There's a great day coming if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. There's a terrible day coming if you're playing games like Israel did. They were making sacrifices. They weren't doing it the right way. They were selling their people out. They wouldn't stand in for what was right. But it felt good, so we're going to do this. We like how we're living. Keep bringing us the wine. It's all good. Just go on and keep... I don't care, husband, that you're doing things that's putting people in bondage and is not quite right because the home life is pretty good. You just keep doing that and, and, and we'll be okay. That's kind of how we are in America, as long as it don't cost us much, right? You just keep letting it so the milk and honey keeps flowing my way and we'll all be okay. And that's what we've done for way too long. Do you know Jesus? If you don't know Jesus, now's the time. Dad, Johnny, if you'll come up and lead us a song of invitation. I hope we're ready. I hope every one of us is, is uh, got right with God. There's a great day coming, a great day coming. There's a great day coming by and by. When the saints and the sinners shall be parted right and left. Are you ready for that day to come? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? There's a bright day coming. A bright day coming, there's a bright day coming by and by. But the brightness shall only come to them that love the Lord. Are you ready? For